Thank you viewers. This is Mr. Dingo. Welcome again to this lesson. And today we are going to look at uh, uh, tangent and normal, equations of tangents and normal. Last lesson we were able to learn how to differentiate and from there we also learned how to uh, uh, use the gradient function to determine the gradient. And then on the other side we also looked at uh, a case where you are given the coordinate I mean, you are given the gradient and you are asked to determine the coordinate. Now, uh, today we want to go forward to look at what we call equations of tangent and normal. And uh, uh, as I've written here, a tangent is, um, is a line that touches a curve at a point. And this is the tangent here, this line here. You see, the, if this is my curve here, this tangent is touching this curve at this particular point x. So the line, this line here, is our tangent. Now, a normal line is a perpendicular line that is touching or intersecting a tangent at 90 degrees. So if this is our tangent, then the line that is perpendicular to it is this one. And so this is the normal line. So we have just to recognize the fact that uh, this lesson is not new. We have learned uh, straight lines before in Form 2. We have known how to get equations of uh, straight lines, and also we have also learned how to get the equations of perpendicular lines to another line. So that's the concept you are going to borrow today to, to put it together with, uh, with the uh, differentiation so that we can be able to understand how to do that one. Now, down here we have known that um, if, if the tangent is touching a curve at a point, it means that the point of, inter of connection, the point where they are connected, uh, 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 let me say the point X in this case here, the gradient of this curve and the gradient of the tangent are equal at that particular point of uh, where, they are, where they are actually in contact with each other. So that's a very key point. In this case, therefore, if you are given a, gra a function of a curve, you can't be able to get uh, the gradient function and therefore the gradient of that curve at a point and that gradient you get will be the same as the gradient of the tangent. Uh, again, on the second point we are noting down here is that the product of the gradient of the tangent and the gradient of the normal will be negative 1. So in this case, we know that um, if we get the gradient, let me say the gradient of the tangent is mt, that's the gradient of the tangent, uh, and the gradient of the normal is mn. So if you multiply mt times mn, you should be able to get negative 1. So viewers, those are the concepts you are going to use today to be able to look at cases where we are asked to get the equation of a tangent or equation of normal. Quickly, I want us to go to example one. Example one to see how do we get uh, uh, equation of a tangent. And uh, my example one is, uh, is here. Now, viewers, the question is curve A is y equals to x cubed plus 2x plus 1. And then the first question under it is find dy dx. From our previous lesson, we learned how to get dy dx. So dy dx here, we bring 3 here. So it will be 3x, 3 minus 1 is 2, plus the coefficient. This is like a linear equation. The coefficient of x is 2. So we'll take plus 2. So this is the gradient function dy dx. Then part b of the equation is find at point one four. At point one four. So it means the point of contact between the curve and the function uh, a is one four. So you want to get the gradient of the tangent at that particular point. We now know that we have got here uh, the gradient function. So we can use this gradient function to get the gradient of the curve. So if I want to get the gradient of the curve, I'll say m, uh, or the, uh, m equals to 3. And where x is, I place 1. So it will be 1 squared plus 2. And this will be uh, 5, because 1 squared is 1. Then 3 plus 2 is 5. So we have the gradient. And like I said before, 
the gradient of the curve and the gradient of the tangent are equal at the point where they are at the point of contact. In this case, that point is 1, 4. So this gradient here is also the same as the gradient of the tangent. So we can say mt is 5. So if the gradient of the tangent is 5, but the point of contact of this gradient is 1, 4, we can choose another arbitrary point x, y. And the arbitrary point x, y in this case, from now on we can there forget. We know that the gradient now is a straight, the tangent is a straight line. So if the tangent is a straight line, it's passing through 1, 4, this gradient is this, and this, and you know that um, gradient m is always change in y over change in x. So what I'll do here is uh, m is 5, change in y will be y minus 4, over change in x is x minus 1. Everything divided by 1. If I cross multiply here, I'll get y minus 4 equals 5 into x minus 1. So this is y minus 4 equals 5x minus 5. y is 5x minus 5 plus 4. So y in this case equals 5x minus 1. So this is the equation of the tangent. You realize that this equation is in the form uh, y equals to mx plus c. y equals to mx plus c. That tells us that this actually is a straight line. So viewers, you have seen how this example is so simple. First, we have been able to get dy dx. From dy dx, we get the gradient function. From that gradient function, we get the actual gradient of the curve at 0.14. And then they, we know that at the gradient of the curve at that point is also the same as the gradient of the tangent at the point of contact. And therefore, we can say the gradient of the tangent as well will be 5. Now that we have gradient, we have a point, and also we have a arbitrary point x, y, we can go through this process to get the equation of the tangent. Let's go to example 2. Let us go to example 2. And example 2 says... Curve A, curve A is y equals x cubed minus 2x minus 1. And we are told that A find dy dx. That seems to be the first question you asked. Now find dy dx as usual. dy dx in this case will be, uh, we bring this 3 here, so it will be 3x squared minus 2. Because this is, we take the coefficient of the variable x, if x is not raised to any power more than 1. Uh, question b, part b of this question is, part b of this question is find find the equation of the tangent find the equation of the tangent to the curve to the curve A at 1 negative 2 at 1 negative 2. So we have the equation of the tangent, uh, uh, that is y equals to x cubed minus 2x minus 1. And they told us to find the equation of the, of the tangent to the curve at 1, negative 2. The first thing we get, the gradient of the tangent. And the gradient of the tangent is the same as the gradient of the curve. And the curve, we have its gradient function. So we can say the gradient of the tangent will be uh, 3x squared and x is 1 minus 2. This is um, 3 minus 2 is 1. So the gradient of the curve, which is also the same as the gradient of the tangent, is 1. So from there we go on to say, if the gradient is 1, the coordinate where it's passing is 1, 2, and we choose another arbitrary coordinate or another arbitrary point x, y, or negative 2, sorry for that negative 2, 1, negative 2. 
From there, we move on to get the equation where y, say y minus negative 2 over x minus 1 equals gradient, which is 1. So we cross multiply, and then we say, uh, let me start with y. This y minus minus 2 is the same as y plus 2. So say y plus 2 equals x minus 1. Uh, moving forward, we get to y equals to x minus 1 minus 2. So y equals x minus 3. This is the equation of the tangent. That is the equation of the tangent to the curve. Let us see part C, which says the equation of normal. So part C is find, find the equation, find the equation of the normal, find the equation of the normal, of the normal to the curve. To the curve at 1, negative 2. So, we know that we have gotten the equation of the tangent. And uh, from the equation, we know that the gradient was negative 1 here of the tangent. But we know that according to the relationship I gave you before, if you can remember your previous lessons at form 2, which says the product of the gradient of, the, of a line times that one of this perpendicular line we get negative 1. So in this case, we know mt, mt times mn. In this case, mt is the gradient of the tangent, mn is the gradient of the normal. We should get negative 1. And the gradient of the tangent is, ne is 1. So I say 1 times mn, get negative 1. If you divide by 1, divide by 1, it means the gradient of the normal is negative 1. One. Now that we have the gradient, m, which is negative 1, we have the coordinate 1, negative 2, and x, y, we are able now to get the equation, which is y minus negative 2 over x minus 1 equals negative 1. If we proceed from there, y minus minus 2 is y plus 2. So y plus 2 equals, uh, that is negative 1 into x minus 1. So we'll get y equals, this is minus x plus 1, then minus 2. If I take this to that other side. So I'll get y equals to negative x minus 1. This is the equation of the normal line to the tangent at the point 1, negative 2. Uh, viewers, let me move to the third example at the point where x equals to 2. So viewers, we know that uh, this question now is not broken down into uh, part A, B, C, which is much more simpler because it guides you up to the answer. In this case, you are given question at once and you have to analyze it and move forward. The first thing you have to know that we are not given the coordinate. We are only given the x coordinate. So the first thing, I will move forward to go at the coordinate first. The coordinate, I'll get the coordinate, coordinate first. And for me to get the coordinate, I know I have the value of x, so I'll get the value of y. The value of y here is x squared plus 3x plus 1. So first I'll substitute the value of x here. This is the value of x that we have. I'll substitute it where x is. So I'll say this is 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 1. And y in this case is 4 plus 6 plus 1. 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 1 is 11. So the value of y coordinate here is 11. So the coordinate at which we should get the tangent is 2, 11. We have got the coordinate of the point where these two lines intersect. That was step one. 
I've finished with step one. Step two here, I will get gradient function dy dx. dy dx for this function, if I bring this two here, it will be two x and two x, two minus one, it's just one. And then derivative of this one is a linear equation will be the coefficient of x, which is plus three. So from the gradient function, uh, I've got dy dx. The next step, I'll use dy dx that I've calculated to get the gradient. So that's the next step that I'm going to, to look for. I'm getting gradient. So the gradient m in this case is, um, we substitute, m is, I will substitute the value of x, this value of x here. So the value of x will be 2 into 2 plus 3. That will be 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3. So 4 plus 3 that is 7. I have my gradient. Now that I have my gradient, finally I go to equation. I go for the equation of this tangent. And the equation here, we know that we have these things. We have the coordinate and we have gradient. So m equals 7. The coordinate we have is 2, 11. I can choose another coordinate, arbitrary coordinate x, y. So the equation will be y minus 11 over x minus 2 equals 7 over 1. I'll start with the y side, so y minus 11 equals 7x minus 14. So I'll take 11 the other side, that is y equals to 7x um, minus 14 minus plus 11. So 14 plus 11 14 plus 11, we'll get y, y equals 7x minus 3. This will be the final equation of the tangent. So viewers, you can see how we have followed this equation down. Uh, first, we started, we, we were told uh, the point where x is equal to 2, uh, a coordinate was missing. We take the value of x, we substitute in the equation to get the value of y, we get the coordinate we put up there. We go next, we go uh, get the gradient function, which is dy dx. We get that 2x plus 3. Then we get the gradient, where we have to substitute the value of x in the coordinate, uh, in the gradient function to get the gradient. We got that as 7. Then finally, we collect what we have, the, the coordinate, the gradient here, and the arbitrary coordinate here, and we move forward to get the gradient of, of the equation of the of the tangent. Let us la do the last question, the last example, before we move to the next part of this lesson. Uh, so the next example, uh, the final example in this case is a curve at x equals 3. So, we have almost uh, the same thing we have done here, but uh, now we are asked to get the equation of normal. And if you are going to get the equation of normal in this case, first we do what we did first. We let us get the coordinate, the coordinate of this point. And the coordinate here, we have x coordinate, so let us get y coordinate. And the x coordinate, y coordinate is given by 3 plus 4x minus x squared. So, if I bring this value of x here, substitute it here, I'll get y equals 3 plus 4 into 3 minus 3 squared. Minus 3 squared. y in this case will be 3 plus 4 times 3 is 12 minus 9. So, we know that 3 plus 12 is 15. 15 minus 9 is 6. So the coordinate here is 3, 6. That's the coordinate. We put it aside. We go to the next step, which is a gradient function dy dx. So the gradient function for this equation is uh, the, the, the derivative of this is 4. So 4 minus 
2x 4 minus 2x is the uh, gradient function uh, for us to get gradient of the tangent mt mt we substitute 3 here that is uh, 4 minus 2 into 3 we get this is 4 minus 6 which is negative 2 so this is the gradient of the tangent but from the gradient of the tangent we can get the gradient of normal using the relationship mt times mn equals negative 1. In this case, mt is negative 2 times M mn will be negative 1 over negative 2, negative 2. Uh, the gradient of normal in this case is a half. After we get the gradient of the normal in this case, we now have what we need. We have gradient of normal in this case a half and the coordinate is 3 6 and x y so we can move forward to get the equation which is y minus 6 over x minus 3 is a half we cross multiply we get 2y minus 12 equals x minus 3. So 2y here equals x minus 3 plus 12. So 2y equals x plus 9. Divide by 2. And by 2y in this case will be half x plus 9 over 2. This is the equation of the normal to the curve y equals to 3 plus 4x minus x squared. Thank you viewers. That's the end of lesson. We are going to look at the next part which is the stationary points. Uh, welcome viewers. Uh, this is the second part of the lesson. The first part we are able to look at the uh, equations of tangents and equations of normals. Now I want us to go to stationary points and uh, uh, stationary points uh, is one of the things that are e examined so much in examination because it carries many marks. Now stationary point, a stationary point is a point on a curve where the gradient is zero. So it means that the word stationary here means this, the rate of change of uh, uh, the curve is zero. So there are two types of stationary points. We have what we call the turning points and the point of inflection. We are going to look at each one of them and the examples in each case. Now, turning point is a point where the gradient of a curve changes from positive zero negative or negative zero positive. In other words, we know that if you are dealing with a curve, there are some times when a curve changes this way and there are times when a curve changes this way. For example, a curve where the coefficient of x squared, a quadratic curve where the coefficient of x squared uh, is positive, you expect this one, uh, this one to be the case. But a curve where the coefficient is negative, you expect that to be the case. So uh, this one is forming a trough here. It means that here the gradient is negative on this other side of the curve. That's why you see this line going downwards. Uh, on this other side of the curve, it is positive, it is uh, it's slanting positively, so the gradient is positive. But here, the gradient is zero. So in this case, this is what we call a minimum turning point. A minimum turning point is where the graph changes from, the gradient changes from positive, negative, positive, I mean ne po negative, zero, and then positive. So we can see something, if I remove this curve, you can see something of this type, where we have kind of a trough. Uh, 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 a maximum turning point, on the other hand, is where the gradient turns from positive on this other side, negative on the other side, but where it is turning there is zero. So we have something like a crest. We have neg positive here, we have zero, then we have negative. That is what we get with a minimum turning point. So these things, if you have a graph that is given to you, you can be able to see the maximum turning point and the minimum turning point directly without having to determine. But in this case, we will not need to draw those graphs. We'll have to calculate 
uh, without drawing the curve. So we need to find ways of determining whether the curve is my minimum or is a maximum turning point. I think that's enough information for uh, turning points and so on. So I want us to, to see here. You see what I've indicated here is that at a maximum turning point, the curve, the grain turns from positive, zero, where it is turning, and then negative, when it's slanting down. That is exactly what we have here. Then uh, a negative or, or a minimum turning point is where the gradient turns from negative, zero, then positive. That is exactly what we have there. So when a, gra a graph has this shape here, that is a minimum turning point. But when a graph has this shape here, that is a maximum turning point. But all of these things, these turning points, what we can tell is that we the point where the graph is turning, the gradient is zero. We can see that zero here, and we can see zero. That's going to be a very key thing when you are calculating this particular point. The, what I explained initially, and like I explained to you uh, earlier, the the, post, the turning point, this is the turning point, this is the turning point. In this case, this is the turning point and this is the turning point. So you realize that if this is a quadratic curve, uh, you know, a uh, quadratic curve where uh, negative a x squared, this is the, where the, the coefficient of x squared is negative. You expect a curve, uh, curve turning like this. And in this case, uh, this part is the positive, having a positive slope zero negative slope a curve i said the one that curving this way is a, a maximum turning point and this one is turning negative and in this case if you are dealing with it you will have a, where y equals to ax squared where the coefficient of x squared is positive so if you are finding it behaving this way this is the you can see the graph is turning negatively here it's having a gradient of zero here and then here is having a gradient which is positive value so we can say that uh, this is the minimum turning point, this is the maximum turning point. Now some graphs like cubic curves have got both turning points in one curve. For example, in this case, if you have a curve this way, like something like a wave-like, you find that in this case, it is having positive, zero, negative. That's maximum turning point at this point here. When it comes down here, it is negative, zero, positive. This part is a minimum turning point. So it has a maximum turning point and minimum turning point in one curve. So viewers, I think you can be able to see from a graph which is drawn, you can be able to identify the minimum turning point and the maximum turning point when you are provided with a graph. But now you want to go to the case where graphs are not drawn, but you are supposed just to calculate and tell us whether it's minimum or maximum turning point. So let us take one example. Find the coordinates of the turning point uh, of the curve y equals to x squared minus 2x plus 3 and then we are asked to classify turning, this turning point, meaning we have to tell whether it is positive turning point, I mean a maximum turning point, or a minimum turning point. Now for us to get the turning point, the coordinate of the turning point, one thing we have said that um, at the turning point, at the turning point and all of them, both minimum and maximum, at the turning point, at the turning point, dy dx is zero. That's what we can tell from all the turning points, whether it is maximum or minimum. So let me find dy dx, then equate it to 0. This will be 2x. 2x, bring 2 here. This will be minus 2. But I know that at, at turning point, dy dx is 0. So it means that I will have 2x here equals to 2 over 2 over 2. x is 1. I've got the x coordinate of the turning point. It means that the graph is turning at x equals to 1. But let us get the y coordinate of this turning point. The y coordinate will be x squared minus 2x plus 3. And uh, x is 1. So 1 squared plus 2 into 1 plus 3. No, this is 1. Sorry, this is minus. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's minus, so 1 minus 2 plus 3. So we can say 1 plus 3 is 4 minus that is 2. So the y coordinate is 2, as I can say. They say the coordinate of the turning point is 1, 2. This is the coordinate of the turning point. So we know that at this particular point, the turning point 
is zero. But how do we classify it? We know it's a turning point, but is it a minimum turning point or a maximum turning point? To be able to deal with this, we are going to use, uh, uh, let me say, classifying turning points. Classifying turning points. Turning points. I want to use the idea of neighborhood test. Uh, the neighborhood test. Neighborhood test. We have seen what we have done before that at a neg changes from negative, positive, negative, zero, positive, positive, zero, negative. That's the idea. That's where it comes from, actually. At one, it is zero. What about before it reaches one? Maybe when x is zero, what will the gradient be? What about when x is 2, at least behind, beyond 1, what will it be? So what we have to do here is to choose values of x. And the values of x here, let me say 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. So if I take this as the coordinate of x, where I know that at x, is equals to 1, the, the gradient is 0. This is gradient. Or let me say dy dx, which I have said is the same as gradient m. So if x is 1, the gradient is 0. What about if x is uh, 0? What will be the gradient? We know the gradient function is here. The gradient function dy dx is 2x minus 2. So if x is 0, when x is 0, uh, we say 2 into 0 minus 2. So it means that here the uh, 2 times 0 is 0 minus 2, the gradient will be negative 2. So this one, the gradient is negative 2 there. What about if x is 2? If x is 2, we'll get 2 into 2 minus 2. 4 minus 2 is positive 2. So this is positive 2 there. Now we see that at the, at the flat point, the turning point, the gradient is 0. But before you reach that point, the gradient is negative 2, meaning the gradient is negative. So the slope will be that way. And at, after 0, the gradient is having a positive slope like that. So we can say that um, this thing is changing from, you can see the way the change is, the, the shape is appearing. It is having negative, zero, positive. The change that occurs with negative, zero, positive, we say that is a minimum turning point. You can see it is forming a trough. The graph is forming a trough at that particular point. So we are going to say that um, the turning point is 2, no, 1, 2, this is the turning point, and it is a what? It's a minimum, minimum turning point. It's a minimum turning point. You see, it's not very hard. It is simple. We first of all get the turning point. Then we confirm whether that turning point is a, a, a positive, a maximum turning point, or a minimum turning point. We use neighborhood test. But we can also use the idea of second derivative. The second derivative, you differentiate this one twice. If you differentiate this one twice, if the second derivative, second derivative is d squared y over dx squared. The second derivative, meaning you, you, you differentiate the, 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 the gradient function again. So if you differentiate this one, we are going to get 2. So if you get 2 here, if the second derivative is positive, that's a minimum turning point. But if the second derivative is negative, that is a maximum turning point. It's kind of uh, uh, reverse. Positive second derivative gives you a minimum turning point. A negative second derivative gives you a maximum turning point. Viewers, I expect in the syllabus you are required to use the neighborhood test. That is what I want you to know how to use so much. But in case you want to... Uh, uh, indulge yourself in uh, more concept of mathematics, you can actually go for, for uh, second derivative.
the question is saying uh, find the coordinates of the turning point on the curve y equals to 12 minus 8x minus x squared and then we are asked to to classify the turning point once more let me read the equation find the coordinates of the turning point of the curve y equals to 12 minus 8x minus x squared and then you are asked to classify the turning point. We are going to do the same thing we did by getting the gradient function. Or let me first of all do this. Get the gradient function, yes. So dy dx, which is going to be negative 8 minus 2x. But we know that at the turning point, this equals 0. So negative 8, negative 8, uh, equals to 2x over 2 over 2. x equals negative 4. So the value of x is negative 4. What about the y coordinate at that point? We know y equals 12 minus 8x minus x squared. That's the equation. The y is given by that. So this will be 12 minus 8 uh, to negative 4 minus negative 4 squared. This is 12 plus 32 minus 16. So let us do that math. Uh, 12, to repeat it, into 8 minus 4 minus, in bracket, negative 4 squared. We get 28. 28 is the answer. Obviously, this is uh, 44 minus 16. Yes, 28. So that's the y coordinate. So it means that the coordinate of this turning point is negative 4, 28. That is the coordinate of this turning point. But let us now classify it. Is it a, 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 a maximum turning point or a minimum turning point? And as usual, we said we go for the neighborhood test. The neighborhood test, let me say I draw three rows, one row for the value of x, the other row is for uh, the point where the, the gradient is zero is negative four. So negative four usually has to be at the center. Above negative four, let me take negative three. Below negative four, let me take negative five. So, um, if we are going to say dy dx here, dy dx or m, uh, what do we do? We substitute uh, 5 in the gradient function, which is 8, negative 8 minus 2x. Let me do that. Negative 8 minus 2 in bracket negative 5. This will give me positive 2. So this is 2. We know that when x is negative 4, the gradient is 0. What about negative 8 minus 2 into negative 3? That will give me positive 2. I mean negative 2, sorry. So it means that this one, the gradient is turning this way. Here is flattening because it's 0. Here is coming down. So in this case, you can see we have a change which is positive, 0, negative. We said that a change, a turning point with a change of gradient of positive, zero, negative is a maximum turning point. So we can say that point negative 4, 28 is a what? A maximum, maximum turning, turning point. Maximum turning point. And I said initially that you can also use the second derivative, dy, d squared y over dx squared, you get, uh, you differentiate this one twice. You differentiate this one the way it is, again, the gradient function, you get negative 2. And I said that when the, the, the second derivative uh, is negative 2, then that one, or negative value, that is a maximum turning point. That's the way students sometimes get confused. Maximum, negative second derivative. Minimum, positive second derivative. This is example 3. Uh, the example 3 is find the turning points of the curve y equals to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x 
a plus one and classify their nature. So we have to know that uh, in this case, we are asked to talk about turning points. It means there are more than two, more than one, sorry. So if you have a cubed function in this particular case here, we expect to have two turning points. This is very different from example one and two. We are only finding one turning point. So the first thing we have to do here is to get dy dx. So dy dx of this function is 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. And we know that at the turning point, dy dx is 0. So we are supposed to then simplify divide here by 6. This is just simplification. You can go ahead without doing this. So this will be x squared minus x minus 12 is 0. And uh, we know that to factorize this function, we have to look for numbers. Oh, sorry, this is 2 minus 2. We have to look for two numbers that if you multiply, we get negative 2. If we add, we make negative 1. And those numbers must be negative 2 and 1. If I multiply 2 times 1, negative 2 times 1, I get negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1, I get negative 1. So we'll get here uh, uh, two brackets with 0. So this will be x minus 2 and x plus 1 equals to 0. So x here equals to positive 2 or x equals to negative 1. Once I have those two values of x, I will substitute uh, this into this equation here to get the value of y. So I say that when, when x when x is 2, y should be 3x cubed minus 3x squared. This is 2x cubed, 3x squared minus 12x plus 1. So y will be 2 into uh, 2 cubed minus 3 into 2 squared minus 12 into 2 plus 1. Uh, if we simplify this in a calculator, we should get y equals to 19. So we can say uh, negative y, negative 19, y equals to negative 19. So we are going to have x, x coordinate is 2, y is negative 19. That is one of the coordinates. The other coordinate will be when x when x is negative 1, y is 2 into negative 1 cubed minus 3 into negative 1 squared minus 12 into negative 1 plus 1. And if you deal with this in your calculator, uh, this is negative 2 uh, minus 3, uh, negative 2. Minus 3 is negative 5, plus 12. Negative 5 plus 12, that's 7, plus 1, 8. So we have 8 here. That will be negative 1, 8. This is the second coordinate. After we get this second coordinate, now we have two coordinates. 2, 19, and 1, negative 1, 8. So turning points, turning points on the curve are... 2, negative 19, and a negative 1, 8. But we don't know their nature, which one is maximum and which one is minimum turning point. So let us test them. Let us classify them. We use neighborhood test to be able to show which one is minimum, which one is maximum, and so on. So, uh, we'll do this. This is x. This is dy dx. This is shape. So, I uh, will put 2. I will start with the 2. This is 2 here. It's the one I'm starting with here. I will take 1 and maybe 3 the other side. So, if I substitute 2 in the gradient function, which was uh, gradient function dy dx, of the function was uh, 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. If I substitute 1 here, I'll get 1, 6 minus 6 minus 12 is minus 12. This one must be 0 because 
uh, we know that uh, the, gra the turning point is zero. Then three, three here is uh, uh, nine, three squared is nine, nine times six, uh, then six times three, that is 18. Uh, six into three squared minus six times three minus 12, I get 24. So this is 24. So the shape for the negative side must be this, zero, then positive. Let me go for the other coordinate. Uh, the other coordinate, this is x, dy, dx, then this is shape. So this is, the value here is negative one. So I love negative one at the center, then probably zero here, then negative two. So let me say that when it's negative one, we know the gradient should be zero. What about before negative one, which is negative two? So I'll substitute it here still. Uh, that is six into negative two squared minus six into negative two minus 12 is positive 24. But I know when I put zero here, I should get neg negative 12. So the shape here is positive, flat here, then negative. You can see that here the shape is uh, 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 negative, positive, negative, zero, positive. Negative, zero, positive. That is uh, what we call a negative turning point. It's forming a trough. But here it is turning from uh, positive, zero, negative. That's a maximum turning point. So we can say that uh, um, coordinate 2, negative 19 is, is there, is the minimum turning point, minimum turning point. And uh, negative coordinate negative 1, 8 is the maximum turning point. So viewers, this is what we have. This is what we have. We have now seen how to determine the turning points and how to be able to classify them. In this particular part of the question, we are determining the turning points. Up to here, we have got the turning points by just equating the uh, gradient function to zero. Then you work out, you determine that. After you get the two turning points, then you classify them. Classifying them, we are going for neighborhood test. We are looking at the coordinates, what will the shape of the graph look like at the, on the coordinates either before uh, the turning point and after the turning point. Thank you very much viewers, that's the end of our lesson today. In our next lesson we will be looking at the uh, concept of curve sketching.